Um, welcome to everyone watching the replay. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Hello, everyone. Hello from Crossville, Tennessee. I'm here spontaneously doing a live. Sometimes with traveling, it's crazy. You don't know if you're going to be able to do a live or when you're going to be able to, or if you're going to have enough time or enough, you know, energy, everything. And so today is a spontaneous live where I'm so blessed and excited to be here with you all today. It's um, 930 over here where I'm at in Crossville, Tennessee. And I'm just so excited for what God's about to do here for all of you. Um, today, we're going to be doing a spiritual Q&A time. I put on my story about an hour ago uh, asking what your questions were. So I collected some of the questions that many of you have asked. So we're going to, um, I'm going to answer those and some of those. And then after that, we will then move to Instagram one-on-one -on -one ministry time where I will bring people on one-on-one -on -one and, and pray for you. Um, we will see many set free today. We will see the power of God touch you today. And all of you, whether you come on live or you're just part of the live, God is going to touch you today. God is going to heal you, deliver you. He is going to release his power, his anointing upon you today. Hallelujah. So get excited. Get expectant. The hungrier you are, the more you will receive from God. The Bible says that God, God fills the hungry and thirsty with good things. He doesn't fill the full, but he fills the hungry. This is a spiritual principle. So get hungry right now. Get expectant. Let your faith arise. Crave God. Tell him you want him right now. You want him to move. You want more of him. Amen. We're going to get started in just a little bit, but before we get started, make sure you share this with your friends, with your family. Do not neglect your friends and family because they need Jesus. They need healing. They need deliverance. And seriously, your share could be the, the what leads them to be delivered. It could be the open door for them. It could be what they were praying for. God, deliver me. God, heal me. And God uses you to answer their prayer. So make sure you share this, share this to all you know. Hallelujah. Hello, Becky from Panama. Hello, uh, Luis from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I'm so excited to be ministering in Brazil soon. Hallelujah. I'm going to be ministered in Crossville, Tennessee tomorrow for Revival is Now Crossville. And I can't wait for all that God's going to do. It's going to be powerful. So join us in person if you can. I look forward to seeing all of you there. Um, and if, if you can't come in person, we will be live streaming. So for all the details, you can find that at the link in my bio on Instagram, Revival is Now Itinerary. And for those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook, you can go to 5fchurch.org slash revival schedule. Um, someone can put that in the comments and uh, you'll find just at 5fchurch.org, you can see the tab right there, the revival schedule. Hello, someone's watching from Ethiopia. Welcome. Carthage, New York, the North Country. Welcome. Jasmine from the Philippines. Welcome. Pittsburgh, Jason. Welcome. Raquel from Costa Rica. Welcome. Punam from Nepal. Uh, Ambrose from Trinidad and Tobago. Wow. Um, and Fiji we have here. Sao Paulo, Brazil. Amazing. Montreal, the UK. I'm also so excited to be ministering in the UK in August as well. Um, this is my first time in UK. I can't wait for what God's going to do. It's going to be so powerful. Oh, New Zealand. New Zealand, welcome. Toronto, Helen, welcome. Kirsten from Australia, South Africa, Washington, Norfolk, Virginia, Washington, Crossville. We're in the same city. Yay. And I can't wait for tomorrow. Amazing. 
India, Texas, Champaign, Illinois, McAllen, Texas, Philippines, Montreal, Chicago, France, Jordan, welcome, Chile. I love it all around the world. Florida, Clinton, Maryland, Philippines, Phoenix, India, Dallas, Louisiana, New Guinea, France, Kentucky, Philippines. Yes, I'm coming tomorrow to Tennessee. Myra, awesome. See you there. India, Morristown, New Jersey, LA, Ohio, Chicago, San Diego, Woodbridge, Virginia, Botswana, UK. Wow, New Jersey, Loveland, Ohio, I like that name. Boston, Massachusetts, Sacramento, Tampa, South Africa, Arkansas, Nashville. I was just flew into Nashville today, amazing. Peru, Indiana, Korea, India, wow. India again, Australia, Pakistan, Mesquite, Seattle, Chicago, Montana, Swiss, Colorado. I don't want to stop because this is so beautiful and amazing. Australia, Hawaii. Wow. Welcome everybody from around the world. Thank you for joining me um, spontaneously here. Uh, so if you're just joining in, um, we are going to be doing a, Q, a spiritual Q&A. I put in my story uh, asking questions that you have. So I collected some questions from some of you. I'm going to answer them and then we're going to, we're going to um, do a IG live uh, ministry time, one-on-one -on -one ministry time. So in about 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes, depending on how Holy Spirit leads with these answering the questions, um, we're going to shift over to Instagram. So those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube, you can hop on over to Instagram to join the IG live and to watch the ministry that's happening there as well. Hallelujah. All right. So we're going to get into it. Number one, this is from Austin. How to maintain complete childlike humility in the Lord, but still hate evil with violence. Um, there is one moment in my life that I will never, never forget. It was a huge marker of when I can tell you that my heart transformed more like Christ like never before. It was a day where I just, my spiritual eyes opened so much. My understanding of the spiritual realm, just revelation of really what's going on in the spiritual spiritual realm. And that was at my spiritual father's church in Tanzania, East Africa. It was a mass deliverance service. He was ministering, um, it was just a deliverance service. And it was the first time I'd ever been to just a deliverance service, which is like, now, like every time a minister, that's like what it is. But this is the first time I'd ever seen it. I had seen like one demon cast out at a time type thing, but never like many. And so this was several years ago. This would have been like, like, I think like a year and a half after it was first prophesied that I was called to be an apostle. And so this is before I'm seeing like really any miracles happening through me. Um, and so I went to the service and um, it was like an hour and a half of just deliverance after deliverance. Now like what we're seeing here, but this is my first time seeing it. And I had never really heard demons speak like this and the fact that they were just revealing what they were doing to the people, how they were trying to kill the people. This one woman, it's like she literally had a, a rock stuck in her throat and the demon was speaking how it was, it tried to kill her many different ways. And one was a rock coming in her throat. And there was literally a rock like this big that was literally stuck in her throat. She was somehow able to like breathe still, but, um, my spiritual father cast the demon out and that rock just came out. And I saw this with my own eyes. So that's one example, but there was just so many different people that were just would manifest demons speaking out, saying how they were trying to kill this person. And I would just see time and time and time again, every time I would see, I would see the reality of how evil the devil is and how hard he's trying um, to torment people and to kill people. And then a the flip side, I would see the love of Jesus the love of Jesus shine through my spiritual father. I would see my spiritual father get very serious. Um, look with those, look at those demons in the eye and, and just command them to go. And those demons, they just left. And it was just, you could, I could see Jesus through him. I could see the, the love that was fierce 
the love that was so fierce that Jesus wanted to destroy every demon, cast everyone out, rescue his children. That's what Jesus wanted to do, and that's what Jesus did. Um, and so I it, it opened up my eyes so much on, on, on two sides. I never knew how evil the devil was until that moment. I didn't have that revelation. I never had that revelation of how hard the devil is working in people's lives to torment them. I myself had, had been blessed and favored to have amazing Christian parents. And even though I was lukewarm for a bit and put a foot in the world, I didn't deal with much demonic torment in my life. Um, so I, I had no clue that the devil was trying this hard to torture and kill people. This opened up my eyes and it immediately gave me compassion for people in general, like I've never had. From that day, I saw people differently. From that day, I saw that we are not in a, a war of flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces in the spiritual realm. And so now this really helped me to love people more than anything was literally that day, literally just that day of watching deliverance. This transformed my heart into more of God's, for God's people more than ever. So now there's so much evil that happens in the world. There are murderers, there are mass shootings. It is so devastating to see all of these mass shootings that have been happening lately. There are people that don't understand um, that it's really murder to kill a, a baby in the womb. And you know, there's, there's so much of that like evil we see in the world today. Um, but when I see all of this evil, when I see people doing evil things, when I see people murdering, murdering people, because God has opened up my spiritual eyes, I don't immediately feel hate for the person who's doing the evil things. But I, God's trained me, God's transformed my heart, he's transformed my spiritual vision to not even really have to skip a beat, but to quickly, to, to immediately see what it really is in the spiritual realm. And that's that every person that's doing evil things, it's not because they're an evil person, but it's because the devil has been working so hard in their lives. Most of these people have been abused since they were children. Most of these people, there's been so many open doors through, through family, through their surroundings, so many more open doors than people like me have ever had. And so the devil was able to access these people so much more because of those open doors. It is, man, it is so serious that we live for Jesus for our future generations. Like these people that are doing these really evil things most of the time, it's because there have been so many open doors for the devil to come easily because of their past generations, how they've chosen to forsake God, turn from God, open up doors to the devil. I look at my life, my, you know, my parents, they are pure. They love God. I never heard them swear. They never um, did bad things or talked bad about anybody. They didn't drink nothing. That was my upbringing. And both of their parents um, are, were pure Christians too. That's my family line. And, you know, knowing that just gives me compassion for the evil that happens in that world. Because I know that if I had been born into that family that that person had been born into, that could have been me doing the evil that that person's doing. Because the devil is so evil and he tries so, so hard. And he, when demons come in, he takes over people's minds where they can't, they. They, they are so completely mentally unsound. They are in a different reality completely. Um, the devil just completely possesses them. So when I see uh, people doing really evil things, I look in the spiritual realm and I, I 
I feel more passion to do the work of God because that's the only answer. We tend to feel um, hatred towards people doing evil because we, we want it to stop. We want there to be change. But the only way that can bring change, the only thing that will bring change is Jesus, is for people to know Jesus and is for people to encounter the power of Jesus to deliver them from these evil, evil demons that take over. They need to be free. That is the only thing. So God has taught me to put that that energy, that's, it's, we need to have hatred towards the devil. That's a very important thing. But we have that hatred for the devil because of our love for people. We love, that's how Jesus is. He loves his children so much that he hates the devil for tormenting his children. That's where our hate comes from, out of our love for people. Our hate, that's where our hate for the devil comes from, out of our love for people. So to answer this question, how to maintain complete childlike humility in the Lord, but still hate evil with violence? The answer is to focus on making sure you're transforming your mind, making sure you're not um, going back to old ways and looking at things carnally and listening to listening too much to the news, for example, listening too much to too much uh, carnal physical perspectives on things, you know, but that you renew your mind. What does God think about this situation? What's really going on in this spiritual realm? And you just focus on loving people. You focus on loving people. That's 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 simply it and that's what you know gives me str strength to cast out demons to confront demons that's what gives me strength boldness and courage and ability to remain calm you know that's what it is is my love for people god giving me his heart for his people i focus on this person is a beloved child of God and they are being tormented from demons and the only way they will be freed so that they can have a beautiful life with Jesus, a peace and joy and abundant life. The only way is if I or another vessel of God can take authority over these demons. That's the only way. And so when you focus there, you're focusing your love, that's what gives you the strength, the courage, the boldness, everything. Um, so, uh, you know, every time, every time I see someone commit suicide, someone do an evil act, murder and everything, I immediately know that was a demon in their mind that was literally taking over so much where that's the only voice they would hear. And they have, their spiritual eyes are not open up at all. They don't know demons exist. The demons have convinced them that's their real self. The demons have convinced them they're an evil person and they should just, they, they need to just act on the voices replaying in their mind. They just allow them to be taken over by demons they don't even know exist, you know? And so we can have compassion for these people and and I mean, the more that we rise up as the body of Christ with the, with the true, complete gospel that Jesus is a healer, he's a, he's a deliverer, he does not condemn, but he loves you so much. And the more that we can rise up and accept the Holy Spirit, how he wants to move and allow God to use us to cast out demons, the more we do this, the more that we rise up in this revival, the more we get serious about serving God. It's a fire that grows. It's a fire that can't be missed. It's a fire that I know with all my heart, I know that this is what will stop people from murdering people. We will see a difference happening in this world. Less of that as this revival grows. I know that there will be less suicide, suicides happening because it's gonna be a fire that they see and that they're drawn to. It's like the bigger this wildfire grows, the more that it will catch people's eyes, the more that a video will just pop up on their, on their timeline, on their social media, 
and they can even be delivered just by watching it. You know, how this whole revival movement that's been breaking out, you know, at Fifel Church and in my ministry since last, um, since last March when the first demon was cast out, um, it all began with a video I put on TikTok, a 59 second video. And this video had different examples of people being touched by God's power and receiving miracles. And at the end of the video, I said a very simple prayer, um, just commanding anxiety and depression to go. And mind you, this is before I saw a demon cast out ever. And before I even heard any testimonies of saying like, I was freed from anxiety and depression when you prayed for me. I never even heard that kind of testimony, but I just still prayed it at the end of the video. And God decided to put his power on the video. And this video went viral, got 1 million views a day, by a day and a half later, January 1st, my 30th birthday. And there was thousands of comments of people testifying. They were all testifying comments on this one video, 59 second video on TikTok. I have anxiety, but I felt something lift off. And now I feel peace. I had pain in my body and it went away. Atheists even commented, multiple atheists wrote, I'm an atheist, but I felt power when I watched that video. Our God is so massive. Like he, he is so big that he can literally deliver somebody through a 59 second video, you know? And so the more that this revival expands and grows, it's like a fire that people can't miss. They start to see it. They start to see it. And these people who need freedom, these people with murder spirits, they'll be set free. There have been several people, including this past Sunday at Fivefold Church, who have renounced having thoughts of murder, having homicidal thoughts. They've renounced this and they've been set free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in summary, to answer this question, um, how to maintain complete childlike humility, um, but still hating evil. Uh, it's just, it's just so simple of heart that we need to have. It's just, it's, it's very simple, like a simple heart that just loves God and loves people and hates the devil and loves every person, even the bad guys, loves every person, even the people who do bad things because we know that it's the devil behind the person. So we hate the devil. And we understand that the more humble we are, the more childlike we are, the more God can release revelation of how to walk in his anointing, the more powerful we will be to cast out the evil. That's, that's how you maintain it both. It's, it's that, humil that humility before God that makes him to trust you, that makes him to pour out more revelation for you to carry higher level anointing, to cast out even principalities of demons. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you talk about being, here's another one about being childlike. This is from Kay. Can you talk more about being childlike and not being religious on a practical level? Okay, so when we talk about childlikeness, I'm gonna share a few scriptures off the top of my head right now um, without notes. I don't have written down here, but well, I do, but I have to dig them for a little bit, but I know them pretty well. So there's one scripture that says, um, only if you become like a child will you enter the kingdom of God. Only if you become like a child. So this is a pretty big deal to be childlike. Another scripture says that the kingdom of God, God belongs to the children. Um, hey, Chantal. you just turn it off for me? But, yeah. um, the kingdom of God, God belongs to the children. Another scripture, it says, when the, when the disciples returned after casting out demons for the first time, when Jesus first sent them out, 
they returned and they were like, wow, Jesus, even the demons obeyed us. And Jesus says, he actually goes and praises the father is almost the first thing he does. And he praises the father and he says, Lord, I praise you that you have hidden these things from the know-it-alls, from the proud, but you've only revealed it to those who become like little children. And the Passion Translation says, you've hidden this great revelation of how to walk in your authority from those who are proud and you've only revealed it to those who are childlike. So uh, this is powerful. This reveals that God literally hides revelation, hides the mysteries of God, hides revelation of how to walk in authority, to cast out demons, hides revelation of how to actually access anointing. He literally hides these things from the proud, which are also the religious. When we say religious, the best way to summarize it is like how the Pharisees were. The Pharisees, um, they were know-it-alls. The Pharisees, um, they, they, they knew the word of God, but they were not open to God moving in new ways. They knew the word of God, but they didn't really have the proper revelation of what the Holy Spirit was really meaning by his word. They were taking the word of God how they wanted to interpret it. Um, and so Jesus is coming and he's not going against the Bible, but they're saying he is because they have a different interpretation of what the scripture means. So they keep finding faults. They keep finding things he's doing wrong. They're like, you're not doing, you're must be not, must not be from God because you're going against this scripture here. or You're going against this scripture here. But Jesus was actually not going against any of the scriptures. He was just bringing the true meaning of the scripture. He was coming with a new revelation, with new understanding that actually brought true life. Instead of being bound, his revelation brought healing and freedom and the power of God. His revelation brought true transformation. So different than the Pharisees. So when we talk about religious, that's what we're talking about. Religious and childlike are the polar opposites. It's like the Pharisees versus uh, the disciples that Jesus chose. The disciples that Jesus chose were childlike, they were teachable, they were a blank canvas for Jesus to teach. He, they could, he could teach, this is the word of God and this is what it means. And they're like, yes, amen. <laughs> Where if Jesus tries to teach this to the Pharisees, they say, this is the word of God and this is what this means. And like, no, it means this. What do you mean by that? That's blasphemy and all of that. So today we see the same exact thing happening. We see so much of the Pharisee spirit. We see so much of the religious spirit. Um, and Many people don't even realize that they are being religious. Many people don't realize that they're, they're being like Pharisees. So the best way to make sure you're not being like a Pharisee is to humble yourself and be childlike, be teachable. It says here, uh, this question on a practical level, can you talk about being childlike and not being religious? So the um, disciples were chosen because they were so teachable, because they were a blank canvas for Jesus. We need to be that way. It's We have all of this knowledge. We have all of this biblical knowledge. Maybe we've read the Bible front and back many times. We've heard so many sermons. Um, we've maybe gone to Bible school, but we have to be so careful to think that we know the word of God perfectly. We have to be so careful to think that we know exactly what God means by this scripture and by this scripture. We have to be so careful to not be quick to judge. Jesus moves in the same way today, whereas when he is gonna bring, when he brings revival again, like he's bringing revival now, it is very similar to when he came in the time of the Pharisees. There weren't really many miracles happening. It was a lot of religion, you know, lukewarm, you know, not, people weren't being set free and healed. All of a sudden Jesus comes and he brings this new move. And this 
revelation that he's coming with. This is what's making the miracles to happen. This is what's making the revival to happen. It just doesn't it doesn't happen out of nowhere. It's not like, Lord, bring revival. Brrr, revival's here. Like it come Jesus carries this revelation of how to destroy the devil's kingdom. Jesus carries this revelation of what having authority and walking authority really means, what it should look like. Jesus carries this revelation. He can see in the spiritual realm of how to, how to be able to cast out every demon, how the demons will obey you. Jesus carries this revelation. That's why all the miracles happened. And so that's why Jesus, he specifically says, to the Father, I praise you, Father. These disciples have just cast out demons. The demons obeyed them. And I praise you, Father, that you've hidden these things, the revelation of your authority, the Passion Translation says, from those who are proud and you've only revealed it to those who are childlike. So there's something we really need to understand as the body of Christ. We should, this is a convicting, this is a con time to be convicted. Pretty much all of us, if not most of us, are not operating in the power of God like Apostle Paul was, where just the handkerchief would come to his skin and they would take the handkerchief to any person with sickness and demons and they would instantly go, just tuck it in the handkerchief. Extraordinary miracles God was doing through the hands of Apostle Paul, Acts 19.11. Pretty much all of, most of us, if not all of us, are not walking in the power that Apostle Peter did, where they would be like, oh, he's so anointed, the power of God moving through him so powerfully that we just, we need to bring the sick and demon possessed just underneath his shadow. Because if he just walks by, I know the shadow, that just the shadow of him, he doesn't have to touch them. He doesn't have to say a word, just the shadow, the demons will go, the sick will be healed. The way that Peter and Paul are walking, this is what we should, this should, we should crave for this in the body of Christ. Not only crave, but it should be a necessity. I mean, it should be like, if we don't see this, we're doing something wrong. If we don't see this, we are lacking majorly. If we don't see this, this is very sad because people are dying with demons. Christians are dying with demons. Christians are committing suicide. People who genuinely love God are staying with demons because the church will not humble itself to be able to walk in the power of God like Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter did. We, this should be convicting for every single one of us in the body of Christ, this should be convicting. What this shows us is that we need to humble ourselves more. We need to humble ourselves more. That's how these revelations will be released. And this question is asking practically, how do you be childlike? Well, we need to humble ourselves of how God wants to release these revelations. Many times these revelations will come through vessels. These revelations of how to walk in the authority, of how to walk in the power of God, of how to access the anointing, of how to, how to really be a trustworthy vessel of God, how to be a man or woman after God's own heart. What does that really mean? Many times these revelations are coming through vessels. So we really, we really have to humble ourselves. Like if I'm not seeing, um, you know, the fullness of God in my life, if I'm not seeing the power of God operating in my life, that means I need to humble myself more. That means there's things I need to learn more. Yes, maybe I went to Bible school. Yes, maybe I teach at Bible school. But according to the word of God, there are things I don't know. There's revelation I don't know. So we have to be open. We have to be open to receive something fresh from God to receive something new from God, to receive new revelation, maybe we've never ever heard before. We have to humble ourselves. This is very important. I see so many people be like the Pharisees and be like, that's not how you cast out demons or you should never do this when doing deliverance. You should never do this. You should never do that. All of these things and that's not being childlike. 
<laughs> that's not being childlike. We're not called to judge. Or, and especially when there's fruit, when people are really being delivered, that's really being Pharisee, judgmental. When you're um, saying this is wrong, this is wrong in, in terms of how a person's doing a deliverance. When a person is set free, when a person is testifying, when there's fruit, boy, we really should not judge. We have to be really careful of that, actually, because um, the Bible says, do not touch God's anointed. Uh, it's very serious when you are speaking against the work of God because you're, you are fighting against God himself. And the Bible says that God will scatter his enemies. And so you can, people are, people, people are like the, people really are like the Pharisees today. Some people, you know, the Pharisees were true enemies of God. The, the biggest enemies you could be that they put Jesus on the, Jesus on the cross. So, People, there are, it's not just the devil that's an enemy of God. There are people that are enemies of God because they are, they are actively trying to stop uh, God's work. So the biggest problem I see with religiousness today is, like the biggest problem I see is that Pharisee way of not being open that Pharisee way of not being teachable, that Pharisee way of being like, I know it all, that Pharisee way of just coming with this critical eye, one eyebrow raised, skeptical. That's not being childlike. A child does not have skepticism in them. If you can picture like a three or four year old, I can't even picture a three or four year old knowing what skepticism is. Um, I can't picture a three or four year old not being teachable, being like, no, I actually know it's this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong, you know, you can't picture that. So when it's when you're speaking childlike, really envision children. Envision how children are, how they are teachable, how they are open, how they are pure, how they are not judgmental. How can you, this is from Jesse, how can you tell the difference between the voice of a demonic spirit and just a bad mindset? So first of all, there's God's way, there's God's way of thinking, and then there's honestly the devil's way of thinking, which is the world's way of thinking. We have to renew our mind by the word of God to have the mind of Christ, to think like God, to see things like God, to be able to discern what's not of God in our minds and take those thoughts captive, cast them out, reject the devil. We have to know the word of God. We have to, you don't have to know the entire Bible, you know, to, to start renewing your mind. You start reading the word of God and God helps you. He helps you. He shows you what you need to know, what lie you're believing. And that is how you're able to be transformed, be transformed where this is how Jesus thinks. This is how Jesus ways are. This is God's will for my life. This is God's will for my future. So this is how I think that comes from this transformation by meditating on the word, by speaking on the word, by being very uh, active to take every thought captive to Christ. That's every, every lie of the devil, captive, 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 captive. So um, first of all, bad mindset. So bad mindset is coming from the devil, is coming from the devil's voices. This question is asking, how do you tell the difference between the voice of a demonic spirit and just a bad mindset? So I'm going to kind of rephrase this question to, how do you tell the difference between, um, hold on one second. Um, I think that there might be an issue on Facebook or YouTube. Chantal? I just saw text messages from Che saying it's not working after a restart. Okay, so you're good? Yeah. It's okay? She's just having trouble being the moderator. Oh, okay, good. We're, the stream's okay. Okay, good, cool. 
Um, thank you, Austin. Thanks for letting me know YouTube's good. Great. We're good. It's just like a moderator issue, so we're good. Um, thanks for letting me know. So I'm going to rephrase this question, which I think is what the person means of how do you tell the difference between have, having like a demon in your mind um, or just having a bad mindset. So when you really have a demonic spirit in your mind, like let's say a demonic spirit of condemning constantly or a, a spirit of mental of like a mental illness, like that's just speaking to you all the time. Let's um, making you confused. Uh, if you have a demon that's just speaking against your identity all the time. So when you actually have this demon, uh, it's going to be more like you, it, it's tormenting and it like, it won't stop and it can come out of nowhere and you can even be trying to renew your mind with the word of God and it's just like not going away. Um, that's a yoke. So the biggest way to understand if you have an actual demonic spirit versus just spiritual warfare, uh, like outward oppression that you can't, not out oppression, but outward attacks that you can resist the devil and he will flee. So the biggest difference is, is simply understanding the meaning of yoke the Bible says that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke is a demonic stronghold, demonic spirit. So that's when it's like you are in bondage. And so you can know when you're in spiritual bondage because it feels like bondage. And you can be doing all the right things like renew your mind with the word of God, um, focusing on Jesus, you know, just playing worship music, just staying focused. Um, but still it's like you're in bondage still, no matter how much you're seeking God and doing these things. That's the biggest way of how you can tell. Um, so the Bible says that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing in Isaiah, because of the anointing. And so that's the importance of the anointing, which by the way, the anointing is the power of God that God chooses to put in a vessel whom is trustworthy. It is the anointing doing these extraordinary miracles we see through Paul. It is the anointing that was so powerfully moving through Peter that just a shadow touching the sick and demon possessed would heal them and free them. That's the anointing that we see in the New Testament. We see in the Old Testament in Elijah doing mighty miracles, Elisha and Moses, Joshua. That's the anointing. So what actually frees a person, destroys the bondage, casts out the demon, is the anointing. So that is why when you're just reading the word of God and renewing your mind, meditating, and even it could be renouncing on your own, but no anointing present, you could stay in bondage. That, that's the biggest reason why so many Christians are in bondage. They're trying to do everything right that God's commanding us to, but they're still stuck. Why? Because it is the anointing specifically that deals with freeing people from bondage, that deals with casting out the demons, destroying the yokes. That's why we need the power of God in the church. Otherwise, demons are chilling in people in churches, in lukewarm churches, just sitting there laughing at us and people are suffering. Um, so uh, we all deal with spiritual warfare. We all deal with the, the attacks that are weapons formed against you, but they will not prosper as long as you are resisting the devil. You are seek, submitting to God and resisting the devil. You are only speaking life. You are not opening up doors to the devil. That's how those weapons will never prosper. And it just becomes spiritual warfare that you have victory over. Um, I want to give you an example. Uh, like there can be certain times, it can be maybe like a wilderness season. It can be just a trial God's taking you through and it doesn't mean you have a demon. Um, it's just a trial that God's taking you through. He's allowing you to go through. Like Job, for example, he was just going through intense trials, but it wasn't that he had, he had this all this demons need to be cast out of him. Um, but uh, for example, like I've had different seasons. I remember in the like second year, I think of walking in the anointing, walking in my calling, I never really had bad dreams. I never had recurring bad dreams, but just when I was getting serious about walking in my calling, I started having these, these bad dreams and these dreams 
um, where the, I could tell the devil was trying to condemn me from what I was doing. And I was doing like bad things in the dreams, sinful things. And I didn't want to be doing these things at all. And I could tell that the devil was trying to condemn me and try to make me think that it was me doing these things in the dream. Um, and that, you know, I was unworthy to walk in the anointing and all these things. I could see that strategy of the devil to try to make me less strong and less confident in who God had called me to be and distracted. Um, but that, like, so for example, I had um, these recurring dreams maybe like a few times in one month and then it would go away for a couple months and then it would happen again a few times in one month and then it would go away for a couple months then it would happen again and I just I know I remember one time I strategically sowed a seed for it because it's always good to sow seeds and and with faith knowing this is I'm thanking you. I'm just thanking you, God, for I know the breakthrough is coming. So I'm thanking you in advance. I'm putting this stake in the ground. I'm putting this seed in the ground, knowing that the miracle is going to bloom from there. Um, this is my seed of faith. And thank you for the miracle that I know you're doing, I believe. I remember doing that. And I just would would uh, submit to God and resist the devil. So I would wake up from the bad dream. And the first thing I would do was I would say, sometimes I'd be super tired, but I would wake up and I'd be like, I reject that dream. I would just speak those words, I reject that dream. And by the way, this is what you should do whenever you have a bad dream, whenever you have a dream from the enemy, a dream that you don't agree with, a dream that, a dream that you don't want. Um, just say the words, I reject that dream. In Jesus' name, I reject that dream. That's it. And when you do that, that's the action of submitting to God and resisting the devil and he must flee from you, the Bible says. So I would just do that. I would just do that every time I had that dream. I remember sowing a seed. And then I never had those dreams again. It was just this season. It was just a season of a trial. You know, so but in that time I didn't feel like I was in bondage, you know. It wasn't like these dreams were not allowing me to get sleep. It's not like these were like really tormenting dreams. It was just unwanted dreams that I didn't want that I knew was from the devil, but it wasn't that bondage. So you can kind of, you can have that discernment where it's like, it's not quite bondage, but it's actually just this trial that you're going through. And this is time for you to have victory over the devil and make sure you're not opening up the door to the devil for it to turn into bondage. Christian says, God speaks in dreams and you have been in multiple. Is, is he directing me to come like receive ministry? I think is what he means by this from you. Oh my goodness. Speaking of this, I've been so in awe. God has so many surprises in this revival. Like he's been moving in so many ways I didn't like dream of. <laughs> I had no idea he was going to move in like certain ways that he's been moving. And it's, he's a surprising God. who I love surprises. So it's, it's. Oh, he just leaves us in awe and wonder. But anyways, one of the ways that I did not expect him to move, but I've been shocked and amazed by, was so many of you, so many people have been telling me they've had dreams of me, like in their dreams, but not just any old dream, but very prophetic dream, very intentional dream. You can tell it's from God. Like all these dreams are having to do with the person needing freedom. And usually in the dream, God is like, like, they see me and I pray for them and they're set free in their dream or they have a prophetic dream. There was, I was on Sean Bull's online academy. I was teaching about deliverance and I ministered to people one-on-one -on -one through Zoom. This was last week. And there was one girl who came on and she came on. She was the third person who came on. It, and she was just like, when she came on and she was like, I had a dream that I was on a Zoom and you prayed for me. And I was the third person that came on. And when you prayed for me, I was set free. Um, and then she was set free, just as the dream, just as, just as what happened in the dream. So you can see so clearly that God gave her that dream to give her direction. Like, I want to set you free, my daughter, and this is how I'm going to do it. So, you know, be open and go to these lives that she's doing. And this is my plan of how I'm going to set you free. Um, there was 
when uh, many times I go to a revival services that I'm ministering at, I will start praying. I'll start praying for somebody and they're like, I dreamt that you, I came to this service and you prayed for me and I was set free. And then um, this past service in Ottawa, Canada on um, Friday, last Friday, um, I just listened to this testimony. I haven't posted it yet, but I will. But I just was watching her testimony video. She shared that she had a dream and I came into this. Oh, oh, she came, she went into this church and this church needed help. Like there was so much demonic oppression and God was like sending her basically there to help them and to deliver people, cast out demons. And all of a sudden then I, she sees me appear on this screen and, um, I just start pouring anointing oil on her and it's just like oil, oil is just coming upon her so much oil, so much oil, so much oil where she can't even breathe. It's so, so, so much. She's just drenched. And so that amazed me. See, like that is showing me God was, was speaking to her, directing her. I want to pour out anointing in you. I want you to walk in God's power to cast out demons but I have a way in which I release my anointing and many times I release anointing through vessels. And so I want you to position yourself to receive anointing, come to this revival event, like she lives in Canada, so she came and position yourself to receive impartation. So man, it's just, it's just so beautiful how, what it's showing me just is that, um, it just shows me that God so badly wants freedom for his people and so badly wants his people to walk in his anointing, to walk in his power. And um, he wants it so badly and he's ready to do it now. You know, he's it's revivals now. And so he's so good to direct people, to lead people, to lead people to, to where you can receive that freedom, to where you can receive that impartation, where it's his will for you to position yourself. And um, by the way, this is another question that I'm gonna, I wanna answer right now. Um, oh, wait, before I answer that question, to finish this one. Uh, so this person's wondering about the dreams. So, so yeah, so all of these dreams that I've been hearing, it's amazing. They're not just like a random dream, like all of them are very pretty clear of like God was leading the person. I want you to position yourself where anointing's flowing for you to be set free. I want you to position yourself where the anointing's flowing so you can receive impartation. You can see that these dreams are so intentional. So for this person, I would say, yeah, I don't know what your exact exact dreams are, but I know that God will give you the interpretation of the dreams with like what I shared right now with that revelation coming to you. And also there's a question on here. Um, there's a question on here about, is it possible, let's see, is it in here? Well, there's a question, there's a question that I read about, is it, is it necessary to be where anointing is flowing to receive deliverance or can I just do self deliverance? And the answer is that Isaiah 10, 26, it says that the anointing the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And when we see the examples in the Acts Church of how demons were going and how the sick were being healed, we see it very simply that people were positioning themselves where anointing was flowing and the demons went with, with ease. Like it wasn't a struggle so much that Peter wasn't even saying a word. He's just walking by, his shadow touches them. It was so much ease. They're just bringing a handkerchief to Apostle Paul, putting it on people like so much ease. It's because it's the anointing is so powerful and it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. When we don't have the anointing, we are just struggling. And many times, most times the yokes aren't destroyed because we need the anointing. Uh, so, I mean, when we look in the Bible, this is in the Acts church, this is what they would do. They would simply position themselves where God's power, his anointing was flowing. So it's not impossible to to be set free without the anointing, God can do anything, absolutely. And there are some times when people can renounce on their own and there's no anointing or anything, but God frees them. And I know I've heard stories of miracles happening of just God just supernaturally out of nowhere, just taking an addiction away from somebody or just, just freeing them. I've heard those stories, but 
for the most part, it's kind of just like there's exceptions for God. We can never say like, it has to be this way, you know? But like for the most part, you know, God has this, this system, this way in which he moves. And so it's best to just do things, you know, God's way. Position yourself where anointing's going. Anointing destroys the yoke. I'm going to come where the anointing is. God can deliver me however he wants. I, he doesn't have to deliver me by his anointing flowing, but I'm, I'm going to come where the anointing is because that's his way of moving, you know? You know, it's more important to have that kind of, mindset rather than like do i need to have the anointing can i just do it on my own it's 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 better to just like do things god's way okay this is what they did in the book of acts church this is what they did so i'm going to position myself here this is what destroys the yoke and then i just give god permission to deliver me however he wants whether it's you know i'm watching a live or at, a, at the revival event or at the church where anointing is flowing or not you know whatever god but at least that we can be humble and um, just position ourselves how God wants to move, where that anointing's flowing. So uh, it's it's good to re it's important to renounce renounce while you're watching the live stream where anointing's flowing, like on this live, because why it's important is because it is the authority of Christ that is in that anointing, like anointing is the power of God and it also carries the authority over demons. So Jesus said to the disciples, I've given you authority over all demons. That's what he says when they returned from casting out demons. So when Jesus sees he can trust you with anointing, he gives, he gives you the anointing and that anointing has this high level of authority. Now we all have authority in Christ, but the levels of authority differs and we have to be a trustworthy vessel for us to have authority over demons and others and definitely high level demons. We have to be trustworthy. Uh, at first, God will just give us authority over our own spiritual life and see how we do with it. See if we will faith, see if we will be faithful in executing that authority or if we'll just let the devil take over our authority. He's, he's watching and that's one of the ways he is watching how uh, can I entrust you with anointing? Will you use this anointing properly? Will you walk in the authority properly? Um, so like with Peter, the reason why the sick and demon possessed were being healed and freed with such ease was because he carried such a high level of authority of Christ, high level, high level, like high ranking, like presidential high ranking because there's different levels of demonic powers in the spiritual realm. Like in Ephesians six, it says that the war is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers and against spiritual forces. These are different levels in the spiritual realm. So Peter was carrying a high level of authority. So what happened was when the demons and the people were came under that shadow of Peter, that, an, that anointing with that high level authority is what made them to go. He didn't even have to say a word. That authority was just like the kingdom of God was here. Like they have to go. The darkness has to flee. The kingdom of God is here. The high level authority of Christ is being executed now. Those principalities have to leave. That's that's why. So the thing is, is that when we just renounce on our own without the, you know, that anointing flowing, many times there's not that authority to cast out the demons. So it, it's really better to make, it's, it, it's important because especially when you're dealing with a lot of demonic issues and if you're just renouncing without where that authority is, the demons can be manifesting and kind of just playing around and kind of just messing around, messing with you, messing around, you know, we need them to just obey and go. So that's why it's important to be where anointing's flowing so that authority of Christ can send them out so they can't stay and do funny business. Hallelujah. And so that's why I, 
And I know that's why God is giving these these dreams. I think it's so beautiful of God to be so, you know, be so clear in the dreams because it's kind of a new, it's pretty much a new concept. It's a new thing in the church. It's not new according to the Acts Church. This is how miracles happened by the power of the anointing. Position yourself where the anointing is. That's where people were free. That's how people were receiving impartation. It talks so much in the book of Acts of, of people receiving impartation by the laying out of hands, by the elders, for example. Um, so this is, but this is new for many people in the body of Christ today. It's so new. So a lot of people, they really need that push. They really need that clarity from God. Like God is saying, I need you to position yourself when my power is moving. That's, that's why he's giving this, this beautiful direction. Hallelujah. What are generational curses and how do you get rid of them? So generational curses are when a door has been opened up to the devil in the family line. This happens by um, just serving the enemy in some way, not seeking God, simply not seeking God. Like maybe you open up a door to drugs and now there's um, generation, gen like every family line, there's an addiction problem. That's a generational curse because a door was opened up in that family line. Um, joining a call, like joining Freemasonry, that opens up a door that can be passed down. Um, generational sickness, like cancer, things that we're seeing passed down through the family line, that's a generational curse. Uh, also, um, any time that a person does witchcraft and they haven't, they haven't come to Jesus, they haven't um, renounced the witchcraft they did and they've uh they haven't been set free that's pretty much always going to be passed down the family line and that's that's the deeper demonic issues that we see is when a person in the family line somewhere is actively serving the devil by doing witchcraft and now you can actively serve the devil without knowing you're serving the devil oh my goodness i'm seeing right now there's this i just I, I didn't know there's this like um, this psychic person who's like a psychic to to celebrities has his own TV show, and this guy is saying that he's speaking to the dead, and this is supposed to give uh, closure and answers to the people, to the people he's speaking to. Uh, so he speaks to the dead, and 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 he's telling these people that it's a gift from God. He, this Christian woman, she's a Christian celebrity, and she was like actress. And she's like, I'm skeptical because I'm a Christian, and he's justifying and saying how it's a gift from God. My goodness! And there are people who it is not. It is not, by the way. Um, talking to the dead, psychic powers. That is witchcraft. That's using demonic powers. Uh, that's how big doors are open for demons to come inside. So. There can be people in your past family line who are actively serving the devil, maybe not even realizing it, or going to witch doctors and, you know, just opening themselves up to witchcraft, not themselves like doing it, but opening themselves up to it. If that, if they're not, if they didn't deal with that, you know, if they didn't come to Jesus and break those curses and be free, then that pretty much always is passing down through the family line. So how do you break these? You break these by renouncing them and being where the power of God's moving, where the anointing is flowing, so that that authority of Christ is executed. And those, as you renounce, those demons have to go. They have to obey. They have to leave. Um, and it, it also depends. There are keys that unlock complete deliverance. There are different keys. Sometimes it's not just renouncing. Sometimes there's more different keys that are needed in the spiritual realm that God will release. Um, there's, when people do lots of witchcraft in the family line, many times it's like they've given so much to the devil. They've literally sacrificed so much to the devil and nothing to God. So in the family line, there is this deficit where so much of the family 
blind has given to the devil and hasn't given to God. That's a, a good way to kind of to explain it for you to understand why when people have so much oppression from their past is because it is like added up so much that people have invested into the devil's kingdom and that's being reaped. And there's this principle in the Bible of, of sowing and reaping. What you sow, you will reap. And even, even when it talks about tithing, um, God speaks that, test me in this. Test me, bring the tithe into the storehouse. And when you bring the tithe in, I will pour out so many blessings upon your lap that you don't have room for it. Well, many times people just give like a little bit to God and they're like, where's all the blessings? But we need to like fill up the cup. Like we, we need to fill up the cup until it runs over. Do you see what I'm saying? We have to give more and give more to God for that reaping to actually happen. We need to plant a seed and then water it, plant a seed and water it, plant a seed and water it for the garden to be lush and not just to be like one tiny little plant that dies because it wasn't watered enough, you know? Um, and so when it comes to receiving the all the blessings from God uh, and this abundant life, abundant life, freedom and healing, simply it comes from giving ourselves to God in every area, in every aspect, surrender, surrender, sacrificing, Every part, things that are hard, you give it to God. Money is hard to give away to God, but you sacrifice because you want to give all to God. And going back to these generational curses, when there's witchcraft done deeper in the family line, many times they have literally given tons of money to the devil. They've made blood sacrifices. They've literally allowed the devil to take people's lives. They put curses on other people so that people would die. I mean, they're doing deep demonic stuff. And so they are pouring so much into the devil's kingdom that it becomes this more reaping of darkness upon the family line is what happens. So this is why um, we, in those cases, it's like a person needs to give like even more to God, even more to God. And by the way, there's no such thing as like too much to give to God. There's n there's no there's no such thing as like, well, that's not fair. This person didn't have to give this much to God, didn't have, because there's no such thing. God deserves everything. He deserves all of my money. He deserves all of my time. He deserves all of my energy. He deserves all my possession. He deserves everything. I want him to have everything and God wants him to have everything. My whole life belongs to God. My whole penny, Lord, you can have my, you can bless me with, with millions and you can have me immediately give the millions to you. You know, that's really how we should be. That should be our mindset. So, um, if we have to give more to God, like if, if there's more of a deficit before we're starting to see breakthrough and abundant life coming, that's okay because all of us belong to God anyways. Everything, God is worthy. He is worthy. So uh, that can be a key to being free many times is making more sacrifice to God, is giving more to God, is sight, is is sacrificing financially to God because that's a real sacrifice. That's the thing is that sacrifice always has such power in the spirit realm, in the kingdom of God. And so that's why God wants us to give, why he wants us to give financially. There is a testimony that I also just listened to from this past Sunday that I haven't posted yet, but I will. But this gentleman shares how he, um, he never believed in giving to churches. Like he had the wrong mentality about it. And so he never gave. And, um, you know, that was opening a door to the devil in his life. And he started watching these videos, my lives, and he would be renouncing and he'd be renouncing. And he said nothing would happen. And then one day God spoke to him saying, you need to sow, you need to give, you need to sacrifice. And he said that he sowed and it, he says it wasn't even like a lot, but he sowed and immediately he was set free. So for this guy, that became a key for him 
to be free. And that key, the key was just giving more of yourself to God, obeying God, sacrificing. So in the same way, when there's generation, generational deep stuff, many times there is an additional key of sacrificing more to God. Um, it's, it's, it's removing that, the, the dark stuff that was done, the, the blood sacrifices, the, the, mon the money given to the demonic kingdom, all those things, that is what, what many times is the key that really clears that out of the family line. <laughs> and it's funny, it's like um, back to what I was saying about there's no such thing as giving too much to God. There are people that could complain like, why do I have to, you know, sacrifice more because this was done in my family line? And But at the same time, there could be someone who never had generational curses and, you know, didn't have these things they had to break off their family line, but they are actually giving every penny, for example, or they are giving like everything just because their heart is like, Lord, you can have everything. So man, that the real big key for receiving freedom is having that heart. Because when you have that heart of Lord, I surrender everything, however you want to free me, whatever you want of me, whatever you want from my life, I give it to you. When that's your heart, I'm telling you, God will lead you perfectly he will release those prophetic keys to you, all those keys that unlock your complete deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I give my 10% to the poor or to the church? So when you are giving to the poor, you are giving to God. It's talking, it says in the Bible how when you give a drink, when you give someone who's thirsty or hungry food or drink, you're giving it to me. God says, like we're giving, it's like giving it to Jesus. So it is giving directly to God when you give to the poor. But God does say something powerful when he says in, in Malachi, when you bring 10% to the storehouse, when you bring it to the storehouse, the tithe into the storehouse. So the meaning of that is the church, the work of God, specifically the work of God, because the work of God is so important to God. I mean, the real work of God, the casting out of demons, the healing of the sick, the preaching of the full gospel, not partial, but the real kingdom advancing, this is so special to God. And, and you are truly giving to God himself. And it's so important we never neglect it. So you really should give at least 10% to the church where God has called you to be planted, where it's the real work of God, the real kingdom. That's the soil from where you are reaping from. That anointing is coming upon your life as you reap. Whereas you so where as you give to the to the to the children as to the that are need, when you give to the poor, um, it is not like they don't have that anointing on them. It's not that principle of that anointing coming and filling your life and all the things that you need, protection, uh, provision, uh, everything that's needed, that's not coming upon your life. However, the Bible says, whatever you sow, you will reap. So by you giving these, uh, doing these acts of generosity, that is a reaping coming in your life. But it's different than like specifically the anointing, like the anointing of Elijah coming upon Elisha. It's different, it's different from that kind of anointing. That's Elisha serving Elijah. Elisha pouring into Elijah, pouring into the work of God, that made that powerful anointing come upon his life. That's where the covering came from, the spiritual covering came from. But as you give to the poor, and as you are just generous to people, you'll see that reaping come back in your life. You will literally see like people give to you, people bless you, like that. that's how you see it happen in your life. Um, but uh, it is it is important that you're always giving 10% at least to the church. That's what belongs to God, but we should actually never give just 10% because that's actually just what, what's God's. It says in the Bible that if you don't give 10%, um, you're actually robbing God. So that's just like, here you go. This is back to you, God. But then the rest of it, 
is still God's, you know, he gave it to you, but he truly gave it to you and gave you free will with what you want to do with it. So it's important that we are so intentional with our giving, that we are making intentional seeds. This is a seed just because I want to thank you, God, just like how you randomly surprise a friend with flowers because you love them. You take you take your your hard-earned money and you get them flowers because you just you just love them. You want to show them that you appreciate them or whatever kind of gift. That's how we need to be for God. We need to give Him thanksgiving offerings. Treat Him like a real person, but way more than that, our Lord. You know, um, we should be sowing seeds with intention. Like I was sharing earlier, um, when there's needs in life, it's like I'm I'm thanking you, Lord, for this miracle. This miracle you're giving me for free. I know, but. But I want to thank you, and I want to say thank you with this seed. Thank you for doing this in advance. This merit, that's like the power of sowing seeds. And many times that's actually a key. When that when you make that sacrifice, that's the key that unlocks. So that's why we should always be a cheer, cheerful giver in that regard, a cheerful sower, a cheerful sowing for specific things. Um, and uh, yeah, so there should be these specific these specific seeds that we're sowing. We should sow with that intention. We should sow with that spiritual revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And by the way, if you'd like to sew into Fivefold Church, as we're talking about sewing, um, the link is in my bio for Instagram for the giving link. And for Facebook and YouTube, you can just go to 5 slash give. You can also give through badges and stars and on YouTube. I don't know what it's called, but I know there's a giving thing through YouTube as well. And so those are ways you can give as well. And know that you are receiving, you are reaping as you're sowing. We're gonna we're gonna trans uh, go on to Instagram now, where I'm gonna bring people on one one by one and pray for some people right now. Um, can we sew on Instagram? You can get badges. There's a I think there's a button. I think it's like bottom right. There's a like the middle button. I think is a you can get, buy badges there. That's how you can sew there, or you can go to the link in my bio. You can set up also like recurring seeds, recurring donations on the 5fchurch.org page as well. So let's trans let's go on to Instagram now. Um, I couldn't PayPal on your website. So PayPal should work for most countries. There's some it doesn't, but you can Google and see if it does. Um, if it doesn't, you might need, I think some countries it's like you need to say it's for not a personal gift, but like for services or something. You might need to change something like that. But I, I'm pretty positive with PayPal. I think most most countries are able to use it. So just, you can just look into it. Hopefully, you'll be able to figure it out. And if absolutely not, I think Instagram and YouTube and Facebook, there's the badges, there's the stars. I think that every country can give that way. All right, so we're going to transfer to Instagram right now. So those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook, I'm going to be focused on Instagram and bringing people on one by one. So... You can continue to just listen in on here right now. I don't think I can turn it for you to see. Can I? No, I don't think I can. The thing I have, I don't think you can see. But you can listen or you can go to my Instagram and be watching it as well. Um, and if you don't have an account, Instagram account, I think you can still watch it by going to Instagram, uh, Instagram.com slash Apostle Catherine Crick. If you just type that in the browser. Thank you, Carly. Carly commented there. Wonderful to see you, Carly, and Jesus touch you in Ottawa. Hallelujah. And also, I want to make this very important announcement for everybody watching here. There are so many scammers and impersonators of me on Instagram. There are more than 70, I think like 77 or more impersonators on facebook i don't know how many but there's a lot there too and on youtube as well on tiktok everywhere so um just so you know i will never dm you telling you a prophetic message and that you need to sow a seed no i will never dm you that the only kind of ministry i do is going to be public like this or maybe rare cases and video one-on-one, -on -one, but it will not be this DMing thing. I, it will never, and any kind of information coming directly from me would only be from info at 5fchurch.org. 
uh, or the email info at 5fchurch.org is our official 5F uh, email. Info at 5fchurch.org. That's found on my website, our website, 5fchurch.org. That's the only official email. So, I mean, people, I mean, these scammers come up with all these things. There's like, somebody asked me the other day, is it CatherineCrick96 at gmail.com your email or something? No, like, just be aware. Um, the only way to give is 5fchurch.org slash give and th through, you know, my, my official pages of doing the lives, the badges and the stars and all that and the posts. Um, that's the only way. So please just be aware. I'm getting about 20 messages from many of you every day telling me about these scammers and asking if it's me. I'm unable to respond to all of you. So I'm so I'm making this announcement now. It's not me. <laughs> it's not me. Please do not give to these orf this fake orphan make made up orphanage in Nigeria. Um, I don't have a WhatsApp number. I don't have any Facebook groups. There's a group on Facebook, Apostle Catherine Crick Prayers or something like that or something that has 7,000 followers. So if that's if you're part of that, make sure you unfollow that page. I have no, uh, no, um, not sorry, page, group, but there's big pages too. It's a group, I have no groups, okay? And I only have one account on every social media and it's only Apostle Catherine Crick. And I have many thousands of followers on each account where these people don't, I think, on Instagram, there's one with like 14,000, but I have like 88,000. So this is the way you can tell. Instagram is at Apostle Catherine Crick, my only Instagram, the one that you're watching this live right now, the only one. Um, Facebook, facebook.com slash Apostle Catherine Crick is my page. Facebook.com slash Catherine Crick is my profile. There's no numbers, there's no nothing else. That's how you can tell. On Facebook, you have to look at the, um, the what's gonna call it? Forgetting the name the the www that thing <laughs> that's what you have to look at um and for youtube i have two hundred and seventy five thousand followers that's the way you can tell it's youtube.com slash apostle Catherine crick please be aware of those scammers and please report and block them all and please tell all of your friends that follow me um or if you tell them about me or something if you introduce them to me as you introduce them to me also tell them be aware of these scammers so that i don't want anyone to be scammed Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, so I'm going to start bringing people up on Instagram. If you, yeah, there's no Zoom today. It's just Instagram today. I'll do a Zoom next week. Next week, I will do a Zoom. Um, I think it's going to be Tuesday, by the way. Yeah, I think next Tuesday, we can plan on the Zoom. Um, so, the Zoom, the live. So, if you can start commenting here, if you need freedom, uh, prayer requests, things like that, this is how I will be be calling people. So you can just comment your if you need freedom. And also, everyone watching, this is time for you to receive. It is not just the person who's here getting one-on-one -on -one prayer that's receiving. Jesus is here with you right now. He's coming in power to free you, heal you, touch you. If you can have this faith, you will receive today. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, Et Lynn, I am, I am bringing you on right now. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Thank Hi. You. Praise God. God wants to free you right now, huh? Thank you so much. Yes. I think it froze. Yes, I got it. Uh, I've been trying to, you know, I'm seeking Lord Jesus Christ for uh, at every time, and it's like I block somebody. I block for every everything from me. So sometimes I lose my faith because I 
and blocked. So that's why I please pray for me. Yes, Jesus is going to free you right now. Do you want to renounce anything? I renounce all the lies. I renounce uh, my sickness. I renounce all lies. I renounce hatred. I renounce family. You know, from the fightings. I renounce everything, God. For me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I break every generational curse off you now, and I detach you from all of that that you've renounced and unfree every spirit attached, every spirit that makes you keep being stuck, every spirit coming in through abuse, almost go in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I declare complete freedom to you in Jesus' name. And I declare peace in your mind. And I declare that you will no longer be stuck, but now you will move forward in your relationship with God and you will know his love and you will walk in his love in Jesus name. And there will be no more lack in your life. And I shut all doors of the enemy. I declare them all shut of all these places. He was bringing people in to try to attack you and to try to keep you in bondage and keep you from God's will. I declare all those doors to be shut now in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Be filled with this anointing. Be filled with joy, God's love, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you, hon. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, Leela Lamb, I'm bringing you on now. Hi. Oh my God. Oh my God. Ah. <laughs> Catherine, thank you so much for what you do. I did not expect that I would be here. Oh my God. Oh, glory to God. Catherine, thank you so much. Oh. I've been waiting for you so much. <laughs> Jesus loves you so much, hon, and he wants to free you. He knows you need freedom, and this is why he, he brought you here today. Thank you. Um, Catherine, I've been uh, suffering from OCD. I've been suffering from immoral sexual thoughts about God and uh, the public. I've, I've uh, sinned in my past uh, that are not good. I would tell God daily, please, please save me. Please save me, Jesus. And I wonder if he hears me. Um, and right now, thank you for what you do. Um, Catherine, I renounce OCD, these negative thoughts and the voices that talking uh, negative against God and my mother's schizophrenia and my father's joint pains and I speak peace, preservation, prosperity and God mercy and his will for us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
I break every curse that was sent upon your life now, and I break every generational curse, every generational curse of mental problems now, and I detach you from everything you've renounced. On three, every spirit attached, the spirit of OCD, the spirit causing schizophrenia, all must go in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Praise Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus freed you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I declare you are free. I declare freedom in your mind. I declare you have a sound mind in Jesus' name. I, I remove every word curse off your mind now, off of you, about your mind. You have a sound mind. You have a healed mind in Jesus' name. You have a beautiful mind. You have the mind of Christ. I release this anointing over you. Be filled with God's power. Be filled with his love. Be filled with peace in your mind now. Complete peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, may you be in rest. May you be at peace everywhere you go, everywhere you do. May your life be completely different. You are free now and you can rest now with Jesus. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for you and your ministry. Oh, glory Thank to you. God. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you again. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Okay, Sinfemi, I'm adding you right now. idea and he brought you here to be free hun I'm so shaken <laughs> I need to, one second let me get out of here thank you oh my god <laughs> Catherine God bless you God bless you God bless you God bless you I have been oh girl you have How are you? Amen. Amazing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, my heart is pounding. Oh, <laughs> it's time for your freedom right now. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. oh, Lord. My family has been through so much. It just. Oh, I can't even believe it. Witchcraft, generational curse, mental issues. My brother, my sister, it's just been torment. It's been torment. The struggle has been real. But I have not. I just, I prayed. I just, Lord, no, my mom is here. We followed every line. We messaged. We tied. We followed. We renounced with everything. Time you on, we sent the share to family and just let you know she's on. Praise just God. follow and renounce. And my mom is here. Like, we are just so excited. Hallelujah. Today's your day of freedom. Oh, thank God. Amen. Yes. Where are you watching from? We live in Fargo, North Dakota. Wow. We West African. We from Liberia. Hallelujah. Do you want to renounce now? Oh, yes. Yes. Renounce. 
We renounce the spirits of generation curse. We renounce, we scrap, we renounce mental health. We renounce stagnation. We renounce poverty. We renounce this oh, Lord, marriage curse. The spirits of lust, the spirits of holding the mind. Meant, oh, not even be connected to God fully because when you want to pray or fast, it's just, it's just, the, you hear things not being fully committed to just go through a 12 hour fast or a 16 hour fast. It's just temptation. It has been so hard. It's time for freedom right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I break every generational curse off this family now. Amen. I break every curse of witchcraft sent upon you, upon this family, and I detach you from everything you have renounced. And Amen. on three, every spirit attached, the spirit of poverty, everyone. And I break this curse of poverty, and I come in the spirit of poverty, and every spirit holding you back, keeping you from walking in God's fullness and in relationship with him, must go in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I declare complete freedom to both of you and to your whole family now in Jesus' name. I declare no more lack, but you will walk in abundance now. I declare doors to open up for provision for all that you need, for you to really live in abundance and for the dreams that you've had, the desires you've had to come true now in Jesus' name. May you be free in your mind completely to speak to God how you want. May your mind be clear May your mind be full of peace and joy. In Jesus' name, I release this anointing upon you now. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Okay. You are free. You will see change in your life, transformation from now. Amen. 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 Oh, I bless Amen. God to bless you. Oh. Always follow you. Always follow you. Hallelujah. God bless you both. Amen. Thank you so much. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lavender skies. I'm adding you now. Hi. Hi. Oh my gosh, I didn't know you picked me. Ah. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I was like breastfeeding my baby right now, and then I was like, wait, did I get picked? Ah. Oh my God, okay, Kayla, I think I got picked up here now. <laughs> praise God, praise God, thank you so much. Oh. Catherine, God bless you, God bless you. Thank you, God bless you. <laughs> oh, okay, Um, I just see freedom from uh, tormentation in my mind. It's been going on for like two years now, so it's just, I feel like I've done so much with goodness with God and everything but I just feel like I'm like stuck like I'm trapped like so much confusion so much uh pain in my brain and it's just like I'm like over it already I'm like I know I'm doing well I'm, I you know I feel like God has stripped me so much and I've humbled myself I believe so but you know yeah so it's a lot but and I just want to renounce whatever agreement I came in that caused me this tormentation in my mind of confusion, doubt, fear, worry. Um, I renounce uh, and reject all oh, anxiety, um, fear, generational curses uh, from my bloodline, all witchcraft, and um, 
all infirmities, sicknesses, diseases. Yes, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It's time to be free now. I break every generational curse off you now in Jesus' name, and I cancel every kind of witchcraft curse upon your life, and I detach you from all you have renounced now. And on three, every spirit attached, every spirit tormenting your mind, every spirit of anxiety, of fear, of doubt, all must leave in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Out now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I felt like a wave that hit me, like I wanted to fly back. <laughs> wow. It's the uh, power of God, that's the anointing that destroyed the sent that yoke out. Yes, in Jesus' name, yes. out. You are free. Yes. Praise the Lord. You are free. Your mind is free now. Your mind is free. Yeah. A sound mind. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Ah. I release this anointing over you, and I speak peace, perfect peace in your mind, and you have a sound mind now. In Jesus' name, I declare your mind to be full of joy and peace and stillness with God and for you to prosper in your relationship with Him and for you to know His love more. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord. He is here. He is moving upon all of you. You know, every service that I minister at, every revival service and 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 fivefold church revival in the park, every time, if I'm praying for someone one on one, every time you will see other people be physically, you can see them be hit by the power of God. It's because the demons have to obey that authority. Uh, so when these commands are, are being declared, saying you you must leave, and even just saying I break generational curses, receive that. The, every demonic bondage has to obey that. It's not about one-on-one -on -one prayer. That's just one of the ways that God moves. So you should all be receiving right now. And I know some of you, please comment in the comments if that's you. Like if you felt the power of God hit you so far and in the future, if you are, just comment that and share that God is so powerful and he's moving and he's freeing everyone here, not just the one-on-one -on -one prayers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Betty, I am bringing you on now. Hi, Betty. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. I'm so happy. Hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. It's time to be free right now. Amen. I need that. Do you want to renounce? Um, I need freedom. Do you want to renounce spe specifically the areas in your life where you need yes. freedom? With my marriage, yes. I'm not married, but I want to get married. Yes. And anything else? Any open doors or any other areas in your life where you're you're not seeing? Yes, with some life? friends, with some bad friends also. <sighs> With some like soul ties? Yes. Right. Thank you, Lord. And that's all, hun? In every 
Scenario in every aspect of my life. God help me. Thank you, Lord. He's helping you now. He's coming and helping you and saving you and freeing you right now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I break every generational curse off you now. Amen. I cancel every curse upon your life now. And I detach you from all you've renounced. And on three, every spirit attached must go. And I break every demonic soul tie. Now, every spirit coming in through these relationships, every spirit of rejection, every spirit that makes doors to not open for you in life. On three, all must go in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Out now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I declare freedom, complete freedom upon you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. And I declare good people to now enter your life that will treat you well in Jesus' name. Amen. May God's perfect will be done now. Amen. And I speak protection over you that no Amen. more people that will mistreat you will ever come in your life no more people that will manipulate you will ever come again in amen. close now in jesus name amen thank you amen god bless thank you bless. thank you hallelujah amen. Bye. thank you jesus thank you lord Margar Margarita, I'm adding you now. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Thank you so much for picking me. Of course. I've been DMing you personally yesterday. I've been watching you um, recently, like day and night, and uh, I was in awe of what God was doing. And some, I heard something say that uh, you need a prayer from her. Um, I have, um, uh, I've been Christian since I was a kid, but I have these dreams right now. I'm married, but I have these sexual dreams. So I would wake up um, like having a like, sexual dream um where i always want sex even though i have like my husband and for some reason uh, my husband uh, it doesn't feel like he satisfies me anymore but he always have and i don't know why now and i like almost every night i would wake up and i would tell him i have you know sexual dream he's like uh, he's like i don't have them i don't know why you have them and they just keep bothering me because mm -hmm. after I, I start having these dreams i start having these thoughts that my sex is not good um, mm -hmm. like it's not like like uh, like sex is not enough for me like I want more 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 like it's not enough yeah. and I'm just so tired of it I'm yes. just tired of it this is this is a demonic oppression and God is freeing you from this now oh I hope so yes because God wants you to be c content and satisfied and enjoy the gifts he's giving you in your marriage he wants that blessing for you and none of these dreams anymore yes hallelujah so god is freeing you right now he's freeing you right now thank you jesus i break every generational curse off her now in jesus name and i detach you from all you've renounced on three every spirit attached the spirit the sexual spirit the spiritual spouse every demon coming in the night with these sexual dreams all of you everyone trying to take her away from her husband all of you on three must leave her in jesus name one two three
Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Catherine, I want to renounce that I was watching porn. I want to renounce that. I just want to put it out there. I just want to renounce that I did watch porn when I was a teenager. And I just want to renounce that. Maybe that's why I had those dreams. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you. I detach you from that now and I break every demonic soul tie and I command every spirit, that, every unclean sexual spirit that came in through watching that porn all must leave her completely now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love you. I love you so much, Father. I know you're taking care of me. You're taking care of me through Catherine. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Catherine. You are free now. God send me my God send you my way. Thank you, Jesus. I did not know you're gonna pick me. I thought you will not. I, thought, I saw so many people and I thought you're not gonna choose me. God Thank loves you. you so much, hon, and he wanted you to be free. Thank you. It's his love for you. He, he did it. He freed you. And, he, and he, you. he wants you to have a beautiful, prosperous marriage where there's no lack, but there's unity and there's joy and there's pleasure that he's created for you to have. I speak you to have that now. I speak you to have this beautiful, prosperous marriage now with no lack, nothing missing now. In Jesus' name. And I declare these dreams can never come back. In Jesus' name. I receive it. Thank you, Catherine. Hallelujah. Be filled with this anointing. Be filled with peace and joy now. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Be blessed, Catherine. Thank you. You too. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You see, so many things are actually demonic. So many issues, like what she was talking about is demonic. And God can free you and he cares about that and he wants you to be free. He wants true, abundant life for you, really. Every area in your marriage, everything that that means of a marriage, abundant life. Hallelujah. All right. Hello, Yamal. I just added you. Hello. Hi. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Oh, I just Hello, Yamal. Oh my God. Hallelujah. It's time for you to be free, hon. Jesus heard your prayers. Hallelujah. Yeah, hon, do you want to turn, like, is it the TV on or something? Showing, yeah, you put it on mute? Okay. Jesus heard your prayers, hon, and he loves you so much, and he's freeing you right now. Hallelujah. I've been watching your videos for like a week now. And I'm, I'm in Pennsylvania and you're coming here this month, but Lord knows I cannot make it there. So I've been praying because I feel like my delivery is coming through layers, but I feel like there's still something going on. I mean, I had, I had a burn here, so that's why my hand is covered, but I've been battling sickness for it's gonna be 10 years now but since i was little really um i went through child abuse and sexual abuse and i've been making my list here and i know there's probably something i'm leaving out but i want everything gone because i know god wants to use me yes. I, I, be free yes it's time to be free hon you want to renounce those things now yes I want to renounce the trauma of child abuse, of divorce, PTSD. I renounce soul ties, all of them. Alcoholism running in my family and my practice over like 10 years ago. <laughs> Addiction, which wage practice it. Poverty, debt, 
family's favorites, African religions, anything that happened there, infirmity, anything going with arthritis, heart disease, diabetes, fibromyalgia, ankylosing spondylitis, lung disease, alopecia, escoliosis, glaucoma, teeth illnesses, rage and anger, jealousy, any unclean spirits of loss that I have from my garden, through sexual abuse, spirit of rejection, religion, words spoken against me, religious leaders, any spoken against me, people not liking me to my children, um, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad I did free them. God is freeing you and healing you right now. Right now. Thank you, Jesus. I break every curse of witchcraft sent upon your life now, and I break every generational curse, every generational curse of infirmities, and I detach you from all you've renounced. On three, every spirit attached, every spirit of infirmity causing all these sickness, the Appalachia and every kind of disease and sickness she mentioned, every spirit causing these accidents to happen in her life like that burn. On three, all of you must leave her now. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gracias, Señor. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, I speak healing over this whole body now. I speak no more sickness, every sickness out of this body completely. I declare no more hair loss, none of that again now. I declare healing to that burn. I declare every kind of disease out of the body completely now. I speak healing now. Healing now. I release this anointing upon you. Amen. Be filled with God's power. Be filled with his peace, his joy. Be filled with abundant health now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you so much this is his love for you he heard your prayers he answered them he loves you he loves you thank you Jesus thank you Lord you keep receiving God's love right now and his anointing God bless you and I speak nothing can keep you from coming and receiving more and more from God in Jesus name in Jesus name Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Jesus. Jesus is alive. Jesus is here. Jesus is a miracle worker. Hallelujah. 
listen, you saw how God moved. Those of you on YouTube and Facebook, if you didn't see it, I think you heard it, but oh my goodness, God just delivered this woman so mightily, came in power so quickly in her room where she's at. Listen, Jesus loves you just as much as he loved that woman, as he loves that woman. And Jesus wants to heal you, deliver you, and touch you just as powerfully as he just did that woman right now in the room where you are at. If you can just believe that he is with you and he wants to heal you and deliver you, he's going to do it right now. If you can have the faith that's not limiting, that doesn't think, oh, I only can have the miracle through one-on-one -on -one prayer or in person or laying on of hands. If you can be unlimited with your faith like the centurion soldier was, this is Jesus, you don't have to come in person and heal my servant. You can just say the word from a long distance. I know I'll be healed. If you can have that unlimited faith, that bigger faith, that faith to receive a miracle right now through the screen, God will touch you now. He will. So right now, it's time to let your faith arise. It's time to look to Jesus. It's time to surrender to Jesus. It's time to renounce. It's time to renounce all of the devil in your life. We're going to spend a moment right now we're going to spend a moment renouncing and then God's going to come in power. Even as you're renouncing, many of you will be delivered because that's the key for you to be free. So we're going to spend a moment to renounce all of the areas of the enemy in your life, all the areas of bondage, all the areas that you know is not of God, that is not abundant life, that is lack. Every area, name it all, name it by name. These are literal keys that are unlocking the freedom. So make sure you're renouncing specifically. And also renounce all the open doors in your life, the way you have opened doors to the enemy. Maybe it was before you were even a Christian a long time ago. Renounce it. Renounce it. Renounce all of the open doors that came through abuse that happened to you. Renounce the things done in past generations, the witchcraft, or just the ways that your family members opened up doors to the enemy. Renounce that now. Speak. Speak now. Speak. It's time to renounce right now. Renounce aloud. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. These are some of the things people are renouncing, rejection, anxiety, depression. Depression, heartbreak, witchcraft, broken marriage, soul ties, child abuse, unbelief, soul ties with men from my past before I was married, renouncing believing the lies of the devil, rejection. Renouncing hair falling out. Thank you, Lord. COVID-19, sickness, death, curses spoken over me, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, lack of love, adultery, betrayal, disobedience, child abuse. Thank you. Anxiety from car accident. The doctor said I can't have children anymore. You will have children, I declare. You will have children. And I break those word curses of the of the doctor off of you now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Iob Ahailu. You surrender to God right now, and His Spirit's going to come upon you right now. He wants to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's going to come upon you right now. You just surrender, and everyone who wants the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you just surrender. Surrender everything to God. Surrender your whole life to God. That is the key. That's when I received it, is when I was ready to give everything. When I was ready to give every part. Thank you, Lord. I break every generational curse off of every person here now in Jesus' name. I break every curse of poverty, 
every curse of witchcraft. I break every demonic soul tie. I break every word curse. I break every word curse diagnosis over your health. I break every word curse saying that you will not have children again. I break every word curse speaking about your future, speaking about your identity. And I detach you from everything you have renounced now in Jesus' name. On three, every spirit attached must leave every person here watching now in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Out now. Thank you, Jesus. I know so many were set free right in that moment. And in the comments, comment as you, as you, as you, as you experience freedom, as you experience God touching you, testify. I command every spirit causing this hair loss to go. I command every spirit of infirmity to go. Every spirit of poverty must go. I declare every spirit of rejection out, every orphan spirit out, every addiction spirit out, every witchcraft spirit out, every spirit coming in through abuse out now every spirit of infertility insomnia must go every spirit speaking against your identity must go every every spirit coming in through porn every unclean spirit coming in through sex with other people in your past it must leave now every spiritual spouse must go every demon training you in the night must go every demon sleeping with you in the night must go Every spirit of depression, out. Every spirit of anxiety, out. Every spirit causing panic attacks, out now. Every spirit of mental illness must go. In Jesus' name, every kind of addiction must leave now. Every spirit of religion must go. Every kind of condemning voice in your head, condemning, judging spirit must leave. In Jesus' name, every spirit that tries to keep you from knowing God's love must leave. And every spirit trying to keep you from walking in God's calling upon your life, from preaching the gospel, from being a revival carrier, this spirit must go now in Jesus' name. This spirit causing uh, sluggishness, tiredness, like you feel heavy, this must leave now. I declare every spiritual weight that's upon you that keeps you from being fruitful that keeps you just being slow and not doing much and not able to so much. I lift that off you now in Jesus' name. God is cutting people from their past. There, there's like some of you are connected to people in the past, even people who were like are not even alive anymore, but you're connected spiritually and it's like holding you back and you are experiencing the same things that this person I'm seeing this right now. This person in your past that's not even alive anymore, you're going through the same things that they were going through. I cut that tie now, and I declare every spirit that was attaching you to that person, every spirit connected, every spirit that sent that person to die must go from you now. I cancel every covenant of suicide and death, and I command every spirit of death and suicide to leave. I command every spirit of murder to go in Jesus name every spirit of hate to go every marine spirit every Jezebel spirit must go every spirit that came from unforgiveness must go in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you Jesus I see someone getting like shocking pain through their body randomly randomly like shocking like almost like a, a, a like you you scream in pain sometimes and it comes out of nowhere I declare that pain to leave now in Jesus' name. I declare every person who's having hair loss, this must stop now. I declare your hair to not fall out anymore in Jesus' name. There's somebody here who who is like, they're, something's happening with their body, with their hormones, and they're gaining weight um, abnormally. And just their body is just being like really messed up, basically. Like their body out of nowhere, there's just a shift and... It's making you tired and you're gaining all this weight and you're eating healthy and everything. I command that spirit to leave you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. There's someone with ringing in their ears. I declare that to go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Father. There's someone here with strep throat. I declare healing to you now in Jesus' name. There's someone here with breast cancer. I command that cancer to leave in Jesus' name. And I also see someone who's like afraid they feel like lumps and they've been having fear. And I declare every lump to go in Jesus' name. I declare any any kind of cancerous cell in your body to go. And I speak all of that fear to go. I speak all the fear that came in through trauma in your life. Someone here has trauma. Some of here was in an accident. Someone here witnessed something really traumatizing and it brought in so much fear since that day. I command that spirit to go now in Jesus' name. And I, I command, there's, there's somebody here, there's one or more people here that have a fear of getting shot and a fear of being in crowds. I command every spirit of fear of dying, of being shot to go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. And every spirit that came in through horror movie, I command that demon to go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. There's someone who has like um, something on their skin that's like a wound that's not healing, that's like infect has an infection. I speak healing to you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. There's someone here who, it's either them or you, you and I think a child here as well. It's like their bones are really fragile and they break easily. I declare healing to you now in Jesus' name. I declare your bones to be renewed, to be strengthened in Jesus' name and no more breaking in Jesus' name. And then I also see someone getting in accidents a lot. And it's like you keep getting um, injuries in your life. And they are always like stopping you from doing God's work. They're always stopping you from like blessings in your life. You like get an accident or something happens, you get hurt and you're just stuck where you can't do God's work. I command that spirit sending these accidents to go now in Jesus name. And there's someone here who has sinus problems and it's like they always just, there's something like wrong with like here in their sinuses. There's something like wrong where every time you get a cold, it turns into like an infection. It's like you're sick a lot. I command healing to you now and I speak complete healing to this area now in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. If that's you, just put your, if that's you, just put your hands here right now. And I release this anointing through your hands upon your, your nose and face right now in Jesus' name. Be healed now. Thank you, Father. There's someone here with, a, there's like a dryness issue, like dry mouth and like dry dry eyes. It's, there's not enough like lubri like water, like natural water lubrication in your body. I declare healing to you and no more of this dryness now in Jesus' name. I speak all deaf ears to open now. Every deaf spirit, every mute spirit to go, and I speak blind eyes open now in Jesus' name. I speak healing over everybody. All of the chronic pain must go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Every disease and sickness must go completely. Thank you, Lord. All COVID out and all COVID after effects and not having senses, not having feeling in your body, in your face, I speak that to go, everything be restored, everything dead, come alive in your body now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands to God right now. He's going to release this anointing to impart into you and new levels to you now. Thank you, Jesus. I release this anointing upon your life. Be filled with new levels of this anointing now in Jesus' name. I declare that this anointing will destroy the yoke out of people's lives. I declare that demons will be afraid of you and will leave 
when coming into your presence and they will obey your command. I declare they will see your authority and obey. I declare sicknesses to go as you pray for people in Jesus' name. I speak your spiritual eyes to open up more, to receive new revelations from God and to grow closer in Him and to know His love deeper and to know His love for His people more, for you to see as God sees more. For you to see people with God's eyes more. May your eyes open up now. May you receive transformation of your heart now into God's image. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I speak peace and joy to fill you. I speak you to have peaceful sleep, peaceful dreams, and abundant energy throughout your day. Abundant health. Abundance in every area now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Give him a praise where you're at right now for all he has done today, for all the miracles he has done today. And testify in the comments right now. Um, testify miracles you've received while watching today, or if you even just want to testify of something God's done this week, or maybe you've just never even shared a testimony. Um, share it right now in the comments of what God's done for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I also want to invite you all to sow into the work of God. I shared earlier the importance of giving, the importance of sowing, the importance of sowing spiritually, the importance of truly giving sacrifice to God, the importance of really giving our all to God. And so look to God right now. So what that means, what is looking like sacrifice for God? What is looking like giving more? And Look to God right now of what it is that he wants you to sow, of what he wants you to be so just to thank him, of what he wants you to sow for specific seeds. Look to him if there's a key there, a key where there's witchcraft in the family and God wants you to sow, canceling, sow a seed as there's been so much given to the devil's kingdom that this seed would be breaking all of that off the family line and sowing into God's kingdom. Hallelujah. So to sow, um, you can go to the link in my bio for Instagram. You can go to um, the link in the bio says get, there's a give, give button there. And then those of you on Facebook and YouTube, if someone can write in the comments now, uh, but it's just at 5fchurch.org slash give, 5fchurch.org slash give. You can also sow through uh, uh, badges on Instagram and um, stars on Facebook and YouTube whatever it's called. I, I got to figure out what it's called, but there's a way to give on Facebook too, or YouTube too. Um, super sticker someone just gave. God bless you, Aline. A super sticker is called. <laughs> and all of you giving right now in the various different ways, I declare this anointing to come upon your life for all of the needs that you have and all of the specific seeds you're sowing for those needs. I declare you to receive all that you need. I declare doors to open up for provision that there would not be any lack in your life, but it is God's will for you to have abundance. I speak this anointing to come upon you and fill you with abundance. Fill your bank account with no more lack, but abundance in Jesus' name. I speak doors to open now, favor for applications, for interviews, for um, houses and, and apartments and cars, all of your needs in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I see someone someone here is like crying right now because they want to give their child more, but they have not had enough financially and they feel like their child is like living a, lack, a life of lack. And God's heard your prayers and this seed that you're sowing, God is, is pouring out so much with the seed. And I speak every curse of poverty broken off your family now. And I speak doors to open up now. For your family, for your children and you to never live in lack from today, but in abundance now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Also, if you are delivered today, give a it's important to give a thank you seed to God specifically for doing such a mighty miracle. This is such a big miracle to be delivered. So, uh, Give him what he deserves. You know, he gives it to you for free. But thank him. Thank him with a sacrifice. Thank him with a seed. The Bible says that what what you treasure, that's where your heart is. So 
you treasure these miracles from God, you're grateful, show with your heart, show with what, what is a sacrifice to you, to God, that you treasure his power, that you treasure his miracles, that you treasure him answering your prayers. And I speak all of you sowing seeds now, thanking God for your freedom. I speak no demons can come back. I speak this anointing to come upon you with protection upon you, that no door may be opened and that you would increase in wisdom to keep every door shut to the devil. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, I'm going to be ministering in Crossville, Tennessee. Revival is now Crossville, and I can't wait. It's going to be a powerful move of God. I can't wait for what Jesus is going to do. It's like he just moves in new beautiful ways that, I mean, I've ministered so many times this year, and it's like every time it's like the first time. Every time it's like the most beautiful move of God. It's just so beautiful how God continues to move in new ways, and every miracle he does is so beautiful. So get excited for tomorrow. Come if you can in person and um, join online if you can't. Um, and yay, we have the details here. Thank you so much, Jay. So service starts at 6 p.m. Um, 6 p.m. in Tennessee time. So I don't think it's 9 p.m. PST because Tennessee is not EST. I was confused by that myself today. I was think I was on Eastern Standard Time. But if it starts at 6 p.m., so that means it'll be... Um, 7 p.m. for East Coast and um, 4 p.m. <laughs> from doing the math right for LA for Pacific Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so so oh yes, bring blankets and chairs as well. Yes, awesome. And um, also you can go to my revival schedule to see where I'm going to be ministering at. I'm ministering pretty much every week at a different city or country. Um, so we have coming up, um, the week after next, uh, I will be ministering in Virginia and the next week's Pennsylvania. Um, and then at, coming up, we have Fort, F F Fortaleza, am I saying it right? Fortaleza, Brazil. So excited about that. Two days in Brazil. I can't wait. It's going to be so powerful. And also UK is in August as well. Such an exciting month. So excited for what God's going to do in the UK, in Bedford, UK. Uh, also, we have many more places coming up. I'm about to release the schedule for August as well, like right after this live. So be on the lookout for that. And to see the whole schedule and all the details, just go to the link in my bio for Instagram where it says Revival is now itinerary. For those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook, go. I think the comment will be in the links now, or the link will be in the comments now fiveofchurch.org slash revival schedule or fiveofchurch.org and hit the revival itinerary tab. Mm -hmm. So you'll see all the details. Um, most don't require registration, but some do. Most don't require tickets, but some do. So just make sure you go to that plate, that link, and that's where you can see all the details, the time, the address, if there's registration, if there's ticket or not, if you need to bring blankets or chairs if it's outside, all of that. Make sure you check that and make sure you check it like once a month so you don't miss if I'm in your area. Every time I go to a city, someone is like, oh no, I missed you. So warning, just check every month. I don't want you to miss it. So check every every month we put the next month's, um, the month. So like we're about to put, we're putting August now. All of August is on there now. So all of July and August is there now. So make sure you're checking that so you don't miss out. And you can always join us online as well. And also every Sunday we have services at Five Hole Church. We're in the park, revival in the park. So 1 p.m. every Sunday. It's so amazing all that Jesus does every week. Uh, so can't wait for this week, 1 p.m. Pacific time. See you there in person and watch us online if you can't join us in person. Um, also, uh, if you want revive, we have revival is now apparel. Like revival is now shirts and sweatshirts and other. Um, cool sayings like the Axe Church is back and um, the Great Commission, like um, preach, uh, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, preach with power. We have a shirt, some shirts like that. We have a fivefold ch church shirt as well um, and more. So awe and wonder is another one. So you can um, get those by going also to the website 5 Church.org. So it's important to know that's the official website. That's the only place to give besides on my social media pages through my official ones. Um, that's the only place to give. 
and um, that's where the apparel is and everything. So once again, beware of the scammers and impersonators. Those of you that didn't join me in the weren't here in the beginning, I have more than hundred, hundreds, hundreds, I think, of impersonators. So please be aware of them. I will never DM you with with a prophetic message telling you you need to sew to an, an orphanage in Nigeria. I don't have a WhatsApp number. I don't have um, a prayer line. I don't um, have any Facebook groups of my of my own. Um, so I only have one original account for all social medias. The best way to find out is to look at the handle at Apostle Catherine Crick, Facebook. You have to be more careful. Look at the number of followers. I have several thousand like Facebook at 70 something or 80, 70 or 80,000 on Facebook. So that's how you can know. Um, so yes, just be aware, please. And tell your friends, please be aware of these scammers. And I won't follow you unless I like know you. <laughs> so just be aware of those fake accounts. Please report them and block them. Love you all. God bless you all. Thank you for joining me on this spontaneous live today. Oh, next week I'm going to be live doing a Zoom, doing a Zoom ministry time. Um, it's going to be Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. So put that in your calendars and love you all. God bless you. And we'll see you all in Crossville tomorrow, whether in person or online. Have a beautiful, blessed night and sleep or beautiful day if you're across the world. God bless you all.